It's uh, whoa. We solved all yeah. the problems of the world. You know. I hope you're all watching that. I'm glad we can finally <laughs> store all that nuclear waste. Yeah, yeah. We got a we got an old septic tank out back. <laughs> it's perfectly safe. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Glad, glad we uh, you know we solved all the problems of the world in just in, uh, in the minutes. But uh, did you watch it, everybody? Uh, well, well. Uh, We'll, we'll have a yeah, special Henry, edition. Henry we'll, Kissinger we'll, we'll was here. Yeah, yes, anyway, anyway, uh, we we have a few minutes left. And let's we're doing an epilogue now. And you know, when we early on we did this wonderful um, COVID nineteen uh, Thanksgiving Day parade. Wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. And we had this wonderful street scene done by our own I, uh, Keith Van Allen. So let's uh, take a look at that. Can he did this see. years ago. Yeah. All right, these are. All right. My grandfather is a well-known historic architect, and I've studied a lot of his work, and I wanted to try my hand at it. And I did some architectural design to promote new development for Broad Street in Richmond, include, mm -hmm. including the Performing Arts Center. Yeah, hold it steady. Yeah. And it got a lot no of people. Glare. It got yeah. a lot of people excited. Yeah. Of course, the politics was really crazy. Yeah. But this was my design, and you could build this. And I had a, one of the top architects in town who was excited to get behind it. But the, like I say, the people were hugging me at City Hall, the the owner of the Carpenter Center, and uh, people were excited. But then the weird politics took over, and I didn't know how to fight that. And maybe someday you got to be a wheel to get a building done. And if I get really rich... And I'm going to be with someday. I'm going <laughs> to be somebody. I'm going to be a real gone cat. And then I'm going to build this building. Yeah. yeah. And then there's more to it. Yeah, that, I like the cable cars in front of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. really cool. Oh, yeah. man, Richmond has so much yeah. possibilities. It's already a great city. Yeah. Uh, it's a wonderful, uh, I call it the crossroads of American history. Is that what it looks like during an earthquake? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the new... Um, Performing Arts Center, which would face Broad Street and would back up to the existing Performing Arts Center, which is the old Lowe's Theater, and that would stay in place, and the, the two buildings would be joined, and you'd end up with two theaters. Yeah. One, there'd be a new grand opera house in here, and it would face Broad Street, the corner of Broad and yeah. 7th Street, and the old 6th Street Marketplace, um, would have been would have been incorporated, and that you can see it right there. And uh, Mayor Marsh uh, was so controversial back in the day, but Mayor Marsh did one fine thing. Henry Marsh. Henry Marsh um, did this, and it was a great idea, and it was a great thing. But the stupid bickering factions had to tear it down, and I. But I did get a chance. Yeah. Mayor Mayor Marsh was in the the old convalescent home when my yeah. mother was dying at 101 yeah. yeah and she was in there for two weeks before yeah. she died but Mar uh, henry marsh was in there and as a I patient or a as a patient oh i didn't know that. i think he's still alive but he went in there for some reason yeah. and i was walking around in the waiting room yeah. you know whiling the time and it was and i ran into henry marsh got to talking with him and we had told a nice him off yeah. Same. No, no, I told him, look, your 6th Street Marketplace was a good thing, yeah. and I've been doing what I could to fight for it, and I, oh, and I put it in my he's design. He's a good guy. Mayor Marsh. Yeah, I like him. But I thought I thought he, he put I the like kibosh him. on something. No, no, he built the 6th Street Marketplace. Oh, that's a good thing. A lot of Richmonders got yeah. all highfalutin and uh, hoity hoity toity and... And uh, my kind of people. and they made him tear it down. Why yeah. tear it down? It was a good addition. Yeah, to Broad Street. Anyway, this is a wide view of that whole street. It was going to be three blocks of proposed development. Show it in like uh, let's see. I, maybe I can. Maybe do you it. could do it, and then okay. I can look at it. And yeah, talk okay. about it. You have to look. Uh, All right, that is um the tr crossroads of America or uh, okay. Trade Center, or whatever. Uh. Richmond, the crossroads of American history, and that ha would have um, information about a central um, orientation center for Richmond, um, where you could get information about the city, where to go for different things. It'd be directly across from the Marriott Hotel yeah. and the convention center, and there would be monuments in there in those al alcoves, 
and it was like a get your bearings type of place where you go to out of the hotel and learn about the city and places to go and, this... and tourist information. And then right next door to it, if you cross that Art Deco bridge, yeah, if you cross the Art Deco bridge, now move it down a little bit, okay, and move it, flatten it out towards the camera so people can see it, okay, okay. This um, is the Art Deco bridge, which mm -hmm. would connect you to the hotel. This was my proposed hotel, yeah, which incorporated the facade of the old Miller and Rose, which you can see there. Yeah. Oh, and then yeah, all this together, stuff. Yeah. And it was to be a big dome and a shopping mall in the middle, in the center, okay. with rooms all around it, circling. Um, I can't make my finger go where I wanted <laughs> to go on this thing. But anyway, there would be an open-air center and dome and, uh, and um, mm -hmm. activities rooms and stuff. Plus, there'd be a lot of rooms of the hotel. And this would be the grand entrance where you there pull you a car up and you see kind of a limo in there. Yeah. And way down at the end, mm -hmm. you see this funny, interesting-looking uh, reddish building yeah. on the horizon right there yeah. and the 6th Street Marketplace. <laughs> well, that yeah. is the the drawing I just showed. That is the entertainment. Oh, that would be that, what the first That would be the show, performance yeah. performing arts wow. center. And where's the other drawing? Uh where I put it, <laughs> it's somewhere. Uh, oh, here it is. I'm sorry. But anyway, so if you're if you're looking at that, yeah, that. Uh, oh, where's my face? Where is <laughs> it's my... right here? It's right here. All right, I there. got. Yeah, okay, Kevin, you do it. All right, that red building in the distance yeah. is this building. Yes, and there you go. And we're looking back. You turn the corner now. Yeah, yeah you and that. now you're looking back. And over there, yeah, that is the hotel you were just looking at. Yeah. So now we're down at 7th Street looking yeah. back. And there's Batman and, and Catwoman and a lot of fun people down on the street. Yes. And my Uncle Kenny, I put him in there, and my friend Al Simons and my, my niece and our yeah. first husband and my nephew. They're all in there. They're all <laughs> there. Put, put those people in the crowd. Yeah. It's a lot of fun with that. Oh, yeah. But who knows? That's like... Got to be a wheel to get regular, things done. Regular, Frank Lloyd Wright there. <laughs> well, architecture is a very interesting thing. And I found I didn't study it, but I did study it. And my grandfather was a self-taught architect. They didn't have the AIA back then. And I don't know um, modern construction or anything like that, but I can design spaces. And I would, I, I think I'm a pretty good design architect. Yeah. Well, you get together with a structural architect and you can do some fun things. And I had one of the top architects in Richmond who was excited about this. Yeah. But anyway, the politics didn't pay off, but it's part of the portfolio, it's, part of the portfolio now. It's weird how um, we, I think we once talked about Gaudi and stuff and all the great architects. And uh, yeah, well, my grandfather I, was D. Wally Anderson, by the way. Okay. He, he yes. Well known in Virginia. You're an Anderson. Yeah, my mother. Yes. Well, yeah, we're in Anderson. Yeah. We were Anderson. And I remember that. Um, but what's weird is is that whenever a new building comes up that's so different, everyone makes a big fuss. How it's not like the typical stuff we we usually do. But then years by, go by, and then that's the yeah, greatest. It takes the greatest. Uh, that's the tourist attraction. That's what well, that's the, the building way, everyone wants to that's see. The way it always is. Gaudi is a fantastic architect. It's very biomorphic. It's it's very complex to build, yeah. but they're still working on that yeah. cathedral over That's there. That's right. There was I remember I was in Paris and there's the the George Pompidou Center, which looks like a a factory. It has all these ducts and pipes all over it and everything. But it's an art, you know, it's a it's a place. It has an art gallery, a whole bunch of things there, and all these Parisians were saying how terrible, how ugly it was. It was built in, I think, 19. I know the one you're talking about. I still think that, that thing's kind of weird, but it's a lot of pipes. Yeah. yeah, and and so the uh, the uh, the Paris Match, I think it's the, That's the magazine. The, the yeah. magazine there. They actually, pr or, or, or mm. Le Monde, the, uh, the, the newspaper, printed, uh, the reprinted a... Le Monde, yeah, Le Monde. The world. They yeah. reprinted a, a editorial about this eyesore of a 
this letter to the editor, this eyesore of a place in Paris, and they should tear it down right now. And it's ugly, and and the, and it's it just clashed with everything else. And at the end, you saw the date; it was like nineteen hundred, and it was the Eiffel Tower. Oh, the Eiffel they Tower. were talking about the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. And so, so, and so, you know, I think now the Pompidou Center, after but I, I love fifty years Tower. or so, is better. I don't know. I I get so tired of conceptual art, art that really doesn't look like anything. Yeah. And it, but is it art? And it's like I came to art school, drawing all kinds of stuff, drawing it, the, being the Disney kid, and mm -hmm. um, then I go to art school, and there was another kid in there who drew like Stan, not Stan Lee, but the Stan Lee was the writer, but he the, drew like Marvel comics. Jack Kirby. Yeah, you like he drew. Him? He was really good. And the illustrator um, for Marvel comics. Yeah. yeah. Well, one of the a few yeah, of them. There's well, he did them. a lot of Spider-Man stuff. Yeah. This guy, Vernon. Vernon Posey was his name. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he if he went on, but he's very good. And I was the guy that drew like Disney. I was drawing the animals and everything. Mm -hmm. And at first we were the darlings of the class, yeah. and then we were told to throw all that away, yeah, and to get into our space and to do these negative space drawings, which was interesting and all. But the big push at the time was minimalism. Yeah. Which means you basically draw nothing and <laughs> and get a lot of money for it. Like but you get up and you you draw yeah. a big canvas, a blank canvas with a few marks on it, a few shifts of color, and don't do anything else. Make it ten feet wide, and stand up and talk about it. Talk about man's inhumanity to man. The, the, have a back the push story. the push pull value of light and dark and man and the uh, cantilevered space and juxtaposition. And um, and man's inhumanity to man, which opens a whole new can of worms and was a whole type of language. And I satirized this in one of my screenplays. But anyway, yeah. these guys were standing there for it seemed like fifteen to thirty minutes in front of their canvas, explaining all this. And I came to the conclusion that the art, the art in that room, was the BS coming out of their mouth. <laughs> It wasn't very much on the canvas. Bullshit artists. <laughs> yeah. Well, minimalism made its point, and it was like it was trying to tell you that it's just a canvas, just a flat canvas, people. It's an illusion. It's yeah. illusion. That's all it is. Stop paying attention to nymphs walking through the silken glade. Yeah. Okay, okay, you made your point, but now where are we going to go? We came to minimalism, which is basically nothing. we got to go back to somethingism. We got to come something new, and and it's come back postmodernism yeah. and what. There's a lot of drawing and and uh, good figure stuff uh, that's come back into art. Mark Rothko but, did just the squares and yeah, colors, and I hate and, it. Yeah, and, but they're I got they're considered great art and everything. And, and I used to go to yeah. the Virginia Museum with my parents well, they, and everything. They are, and it was all over the place, and they were pushing it on you. Yeah, and they were worth a lot of money. Mondrian. And, um, but I was already had other kinds of visions and it's, that became the Academy. Do you yeah. know what I mean by yeah. the Academy back in the days of the impressionists? Yeah. They were re revolting against the Academy, which was the big yeah. established art establishment that yeah. said it had to be this way. And so they broke that mold and then they went more and more abstract, more and more abstract and the, way into the 20th century until the 60s and 70s, they had become the, yeah. the academy, these uh, abstract expressionists and everything. Like in the art school you went to, you it had to be like this. Yeah. And if you drew something like, ooh, a comic book, or if you really like drew... Yeah. if you were, No, if you could really yeah. draw, like Spider-Man or Disney or whatever, yeah. or fantasy art... You were oh you're in commercial art go yeah don't get out get out of go make your million dollars somewhere else yeah <laughs> and they would look down their nose at you and then they'd they're spend, not art lovers they're hard haters and then they spend a lot of time in commercial art learning how to draw a perfect two number two <laughs> oh. I had okay. a photography I teacher who hated all my photography and all my people in the class said I think you're the best they would privately tell me that because he just and they would they did were, you take art I took photography in college. I mean, only only to get access to the that to was, the to the uh, photography to the, was to kind the, of fun. I thought, yeah, but. only and this was you know film photography and developing your own. So that not yeah. like what they, we have now. 
which is now everyone's a photographer. Uh, but uh, but I, I kind of realized there. Also, never forget that Picasso and uh, Salvador Dali, they their their teachers were constantly criticizing their work. But do you know any work, great works that their teachers did? No. <laughs> How about Picasso and Dolly? Yeah, we know quite a lot of what they did. I don't know if they had teachers that criticized their work, they but did. I see what you point. They, no, they were so, especially Picasso, they, things were so different. And Dolly was kind of a weird well, they, guy, and he didn't like people criticizing his stuff. But Picasso, <laughs> Picasso became overvalued, I think. I mean, there were doodles of his, of these bulls, yeah, just quick doodles, like cartoon doodles of bulls with weird spiky yeah. tongues. He'd draw them over and over again, and they'd show them at the Virginia Museum, and they would say they were worth $25,000 yeah. a piece. Yeah. And that was not fair. That yeah. was not right. They're probably worth millions now. And that, ain't, that <laughs> whole thing ain't right. That whole thing ain't yeah. right. And there's a lot of other artists doing a lot of other stuff and are much better. I'm not saying that Picasso was bad. I like the guy. Yeah. But he became, he could do no wrong yeah. And it was one big industry, and that comes from the um, the rich people that support it, and it becomes the like the intran like the emperor's new clothes. Yes. a lot of those people are doing it because other people are saying they should be doing yes. it. They should be buying these paintings, not because they really get it. You know, I oh, or they they just want to look good, you, and uh, instead, uh, why can't that same person? Look at um, Happy Hooligan and say, <laughs> hey, that's a pretty good Happy Hooligan. He and was, they should. He was an old comic strip character for way You back. know the craziest thing about artists is that artists actually are quite uh, well, the supportive artists, of each other. The artists themselves. I mean, I, I, yeah. Picasso would probably agree yeah. with me. Um, I, I, I've done, like, really stupid picture drawings and I don't know, most I show it to most artists and they say, very good. You did I, very well. I give Picasso. And I'm not an artist. I give Picasso. Yeah. My highest compliment, I say, I say he was a great cartoonist. Yeah. And it takes something to be a good cartoonist yeah. to draw in a few lines something yeah. interesting that somebody else might have to sit there and, and shade and color and everything. Yeah. Now, I'm not against shading and color, but I mean, to do something in a few lines that really communicates, that's yeah. something special. Yeah. I And he was basically, most of his stuff, except for a little bit in his blue period, were yeah. cartoons, were painted yeah. cartoons, yeah. doodles, abstract, you know, and I I sit there and do all kinds of stuff like that in the margin of my telephone yeah. book. Yeah, yeah. And one of these days I'm going to put out some prints. Put out your telephone of, book. I'm going <laughs> to put out my doodles Yeah. and work them up in Photoshop. I've started it. Yeah. And prove something to the world if I don't die first. Don't die. But, um, Live forever. Live forever through your art. Who wants to do that? <laughs> I will live forever through reincarnation, yeah, sure. Yeah. Nobody really dies. You just, okay. that's what the elephant man said. <laughs> hey, you know, nothing. I ever, haven't heard from the elephant man recently. You remember I think that? He died. Nobody dies. I think he dies. No, he became Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah. he, I'm serious. And then he died. He, yeah, and he's gone on to whatever. But I mean, I can, I'm sure as I, and I like to call it karmic sleuthing, but I am sure as you sit right here, that Michael Jackson was the reincarnation of the Elephant Man. <laughs> and you can line up all his karmic points. Mm -hmm. um, he was moving. He could now move, and he could move and sing. He was overcoming all that. He also had a, a domineering person in his life that yeah. that said, you know, his, that, dad. That, yeah. his dad. But the Elephant Man had that guy Sykes or whatever. Uh, oh, The guy that used to whip him. Oh, that the guy in the in the, the entrepreneur in the, in the, in yeah. the, uh, in the carnival. My yeah. treasure. I remember uh, he was a good actor. Treves was the doctor. That yeah, but there was him. the guy, the there's a carnival yeah. carny guy that ran him, that yeah. controlled him, and whipped him and made him. You will perform. Sometimes I use the elephant man's picture as my profile pic on the internet. <laughs> I think I've seen that. I didn't. I didn't notice any difference. <laughs> Oh yes. Okay. Now, you look, now you, I see. You get a haircut. You look better. Yeah. But Michael Jackson wanted to buy his skeleton, yeah, that's right. and he he made a comeback to London. That was a big triumphal return from that other. You remember he had that big giant floating yeah. figure of himself coming yeah. down the Thames. Mm -hmm. That was a karmic yeah. retribution return. Yeah. Look, you treated me like I was like the 
poor elephant yeah. man <laughs> yeah. in a in the eighteen hundreds yeah. or whatever, and now I'm back and I'm triumphant. And I think it was he probably didn't know. I don't know. Maybe he did come to know it. I once met an elephant woman. Uh, oh, you mean that I mean, has elephant a teenage, ties? A teen, yeah, teenage girl. It well, was the tragic. saddest thing it's I ever tragic, saw. Yeah. Tragic. I mean, you, you you have no problems when you, but you some, meet someone like that. But you yeah. have to tell people, even this will pass. Like Abraham Lincoln said, this too shall pass. Yeah. You are a soul <clears throat> within a body. Yeah, It's like a car you rent. You rented this car and I rented <laughs> that. And you're only in it for a time. And then, thank God, at one point, you get loose of it and yeah. go on and do something else. You go back Too to heaven. mileage on my car. Yeah. You go back to heaven. For a yeah. while, and you may come back to Earth. Yeah, um, it's just an endless universe of strange, wondrous, up and down. There are bad things and good things, but it's always an adventure. I'm not planning on going. I'm, I'm planning on having myself frozen. I, I so yeah, I don't. So I live forever. I want to come back in forty years and like look Walt and see what you're. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they say that happened. I did a cartoon. It happened at the Epcot Center. <laughs> I did a cartoon about that where Walt, where Mickey is sneaking into the freezer, <laughs> and then Walt's in this jug, <laughs> all frozen. And thinks, Uncle Walt. Yeah. But he, uh, I've seen his grave. You know, he was cremated. He wasn't. He was cremated. He actually was died. I mean, I don't know why, but they they cremated him pretty fast, like within a couple of days. What it so was that? So that oh, led, he was led riddled, to the myth. He was riddled with he, cancer. Yeah. Why would he want to come back in that body? Yeah. But um, listen, if I want to come back, I think I'm Ward back Kimble, in this body. Ward Kimball is one of his greatest animators. Said he yeah. probably considered it for a while because he was into everything. Yeah. He probably was talking about it for a while, yeah, yeah. and that started the rumor. Actually, my body's all right. My body's healthy. I mean, I don't get sick like a lot mm. of people I do. I mean, so far, so I'm very happy with it. It's treated me all right. <laughs> well, shouldn't I shouldn't ask ask for something I don't want? Uh, so, um, so let's see. Why don't you uh, uh, Why don't you take us out? We had a We had a good uh, conversation, and uh, I hope you enjoyed part two. I could put this up high. Yeah, put it up. Yeah, right gonna, yeah. And uh, yeah, this has nothing to do. You got the mice in here, cat. You're not doing your job. <laughs> I'm mousing. time Keith thank everybody you. stay healthy thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. <laughs> Just wear ties wear ties like him and you'll be protected yes they keep you warm they're, radio they're radioactive you got it see you next week everybody okay. have a happy thanksgiving hit the button let us be gone